What's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna be installing an oil cooler in my 370Z. This is the second video in a series of videos that I'm doing on preparing my car for forced induction. I'll be installing the oil cooler today, showing you guys sort of how it works and what it's supposed to do. Currently, I'm coming back from the auto parts store right now, some things that I'm gonna need for this install. So let's get right into it. So there it is everybody, there is my new SetRab 25 row oil cooler. This is the next modification that I will be doing to my car in order to prepare for forced induction. When you install a turbo or a supercharger on your car, it is going to run a lot hotter than it does from the factory because you are pumping a lot more gas into it, you're running it at higher pressures, so the engine just tends to heat up a little more. The 370Z does already have a tendency to overheat, even just on track use, even without a turbo kit. So in order to make sure that it runs efficiently and that the oil stays at a proper temperature, you need to find some way to cool the oil. And that's exactly what the oil cooler is supposed to do. This acts very similar to the radiator in your car that's used to cool the engine, but this runs oil through the actual uh, intercooler and allows it to mediate the temperature. I have specifically gone with the 25 row oil cooler because it is the largest oil cooler that will fit underneath the Stillen intakes because I am still planning on doing the Stillen supercharger kit. So this will allow me to fit the oil cooler without having to make any modifications to the supercharger kit. With of course the oil cooler Z1 also sends you your instruction manual with all the hardware you're going to need to install the oil cooler. Of course, give you the oil cooler lines which you're gonna to need to run. I've also gone ahead and invested in the protective coating that they had. This prevents the actual metal uh, oil lines from being able to get torn up uh, when they're rubbing against the body. One thing I would highly recommend if you are gonna get an oil cooler for this car is invest the extra $50 in getting the thermostatic plate. This plate prevents the car from running the oil if it's not already warmed up. If you do not get this, the oil temperature is always going to run low during daily driving and that can harm the lubrication inside the engine, so I would recommend in investing the extra bucks to be able to get the thermostatic plate. Alright guys, now it's finally time to install the oil cooler on the 370Z. First things first though, we do have to get the front end of the car jacked up, so let's roll the time. In this video, I'm just gonna show a time lapse of the install with some of my vlogging, but I will have a more detailed install video coming up pretty soon, so y'all can stay tuned for that. The review of this oil cooler continues at 8.03. Now it's time to take the Z's bumper off for the first time. I've never done this before on my car, so I'll be curious to see how this goes. Alright, so I just finished pulling the bumper off. The Z is currently draining out all of its oil at the moment, so I'm just waiting on that to finish up. And I'm probably going to spend some time cleaning up my radiator because it looks like it has seen a lot of battle with insects lately. So it's only been like two years, but it's already sort of caked in bugs. So I think I'm going to spend some time to try and clean this up a little bit.
Going on guys it's day two of this install last night I ended up having to stop filming because I was starting to run out of battery on both of the cameras it's also kind of getting a little tired I think I was up to like one in the morning or something like that getting everything put together um, but yeah so last night I managed to get the old cooler lines put on the sandwich plate is on the car was filled up with oil but a thought kept me awake at night last night and that was the fact that I had left the oil cooler lines a bit too close to the cross member the problem is when you're revving the engine up, the oil cooler line is going to move a little bit. And if that ends up banging against the cross member, it could possibly damage the oil lines. I want to make sure I get this done right. So this morning I'm going to have to undo everything, redrain the oil, space it so that way there's enough room between the engine and the cross member so it doesn't hit on anything. And then hopefully we can take it out for a drive today. It is pretty dreary as you guys can see. But still, hopefully we can take the car out, check to make sure everything is working. So, let's continue with this build. Alright guys, so the oil cooler is now installed on the vehicle and I am now taking the Z out for its first test drive. It is unfortunately pretty wet outside still, so I'm not really going to be able to push the car or anything, but still some freeway driving should allow us to bring the oil temperatures up past 180 degrees. At that point the thermostatic plate is supposed to activate and allow oil to flow through to the oil cooler, and we should be able to see the oil temperatures level off at that point. So yeah, let's bring this temperature up, it's currently sitting about 160 or so, and let's see if this oil cooler works. So that was actually pretty impressive at how well that works. Normally when I take the car out on the freeway like that, I will hit about 190 or 200 degrees Fahrenheit fairly easily. But this thing hit 180 degrees and then it just stuck there. The oil temperature is sitting solidly at 180 right now and it doesn't seem to show any signs of budging at all. It is pretty cool to see some hard evidence that this modification is actually working the way it's supposed to. Um, I'm also curious to see how well it's going to work when I finally take it to the track. Anybody who's tracked their Z has said that you should get an oil cooler because the oil temperatures do tend to rise quite a bit. So I should hopefully be able to moderate those temperatures now. Plus this will of course help when I go forced induction because the oil temperatures do tend to run a little bit hotter on forced induction applications. As far as what is to come next in this series, I plan on doing a differential swap. I will be changing the Z's open diff to a limited slip differential. I'm still not entirely decided on which differential I'm going to go for, but I'm already starting to make plans for that. That's probably not going to happen for a couple months though, because I do have some other projects and things I'm trying to get taken care of first. But it is nice to have another item knocked off of this list. I am one step closer to being able to go forced induction. Anyways, thank you for watching this video, guys. Give it a thumbs up. Maybe you can hit the subscribe button down below for more videos. And I will see y'all in the next one later.